Alright, exit corners started updating again. Because I forgot how all the voices were, I'm just going to go through and get a secret ending. There we go. I had a feeling that might work. Huh? How did you do that? I made the number 26 using the tiles sent left for us. You know, using negative space. It's tricky, but you can do it. I feel like... like that wasn't the right answer. Well, if it wasn't the right answer, the screen would have said solved. Congratulations, contestants. You've solved it. Before you proceed, I feel like it is my responsibility to issue a warning. The 24-hour time limit, while important, should not be your immediate concern. The explosives I've planted are far from the most dangerous thing in this hotel. Alright, I'm just going to skip forward a bit. Okay, and the options under paranoia, I've got question marks and I've also got a little thingamajig here now. I'm not sure what the question marks are, but I'm pretty sure that that's what I got for doing the puzzle 2 in the odd way. Chapter select into one moment. Seven. Mash forward to the puzzle. Alright, so this one... Rotates up, rotates that way. Flips. And then... nothing. There we go. Puzzle solved. Now I just cross my fingers. That doesn't make any sense. What's wrong, Ray? That can't be the right answer. You only entered four symbols when the solution is five symbols long. It's the right answer. Trust me. It matches the pattern. Rotate 90 degrees right. Rotate 90 degrees right again. Rotate 180 degrees. And then mirror right to left. It just so happens that the final tile in this solution is blank. You mirror from the right half to the left, so I didn't even need to enter a fifth symbol. Makes sense to me. Huh. I guess that does work. I suppose Scent programmed two solutions for this puzzle. Two solutions? Yeah. There was another valid answer. I was just about to enter it. I wonder what would have happened if I'd tried the other one. Well done, contestants. Well done, indeed. This marks the end of the preliminary testing phase. If you've made it this far, then you've all been making excellent progress. I applaud you for showing such determination and wit. Should be noted, however, that Exit Corners is far from over. And I'm gonna skip ahead. And there we go, another one right there. Now, if I could remember which one had the sword in it. Aha! It was this one. I mean, clearly it's fake. Look at how blunt it is. Nah, there's no way. That thing looks about as real as the rest of this hotel. Let's have a look, why don't we? Hink stood on his toes and reached for the blade. 
Despite nearly having to jump for it, Ink managed to pull the sword down without injuring himself. What are you doing? Well, there's only one way to know for sure. And hey, it looks like I was right. So it's fake is what you're saying? Pretty much. The weight's all wonky. Here, look at this. Ink ran his finger along the length of the blade's edge, then lifted it to show Aether. He was unscathed. See? This thing's harmless. What are you doing? You had best put that thing back this instant! I was just looking at it. Yeesh. That's a weapon, Ink. You can't just be flailing it around willy-nilly. That's how accidents happen. I'm hardly flailing it around. I don't want to hear it. You give me that to me right now. Beth tore the sword from Ink's grip. He didn't resist, but he couldn't help feeling a little embarrassed. And, and with that done, there's one that I actually got the first time through that now becomes an actual solution. Skip. Mash, 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 mash. Three seven nine. Three is C, seven is G, and nine is I. CGI. Computer generated image. They're just simulated brains. All right, so February 31st equals March 3rd. There we go, got it. Huh, that's quite clever, Ink. So the months, like, wrap around? Yeah, February only has 28 days this year, but if February did go all the way to the 31st, it would land on the same day as March 3rd. Bah, I thought this was going to be programming focused, so I was thinking about it all wrong. Eh, we all make mistakes. Oh, have you already solved it? Yeah, we just solved this one. That was pretty fast. Nice work. Good. We ought to be nearing the end of this section of Exit Corner soon. Huh. Alright, skip. And that's three little emblem things now. So, chapter 17 is the one that has the secret ending, and then arc 2, it's gotten up to chapter 18, delayed. Which, considering that this one said July 1st, ish made me think oh chapter 18 has been delayed egg on my face anyway skip forward to the end got it there we go you know I'll compile after I make a few small changes you solved it? Yeah. How much time is left on the clock? Just over four minutes. Heh. <laughs> Told you I was good at this. Ray triumphantly slammed his fingers on a set of computer keys from within the machine. And? Compiling. No error so far. So, you've solved it. Most likely. Once this thing compiles, it ought to do... something. Not sure what, though. There's a, this is only a small snippet of code taken from something much larger. Any idea what it could be? 
Whatever it is, it's hella complicated. Yeah, there we go. Compiled and executed. Ink size were glued to the monitor. It's shown in bright white before abruptly cutting to scent. I've already solved the puzzle. Go away. Yes, yes, I know. You are a great programmer, etc. But just as you've passed your test, so too have I passed mine. What the hell are you talking about? Why, the Turing test, of course. You're not fooling anyone, Scent. Get out of here. What's the matter, Ray? I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Scent over here is trying to convince us that he's an AI. Don't listen to him. A an AI? Is that even possible? Oh, but I'm not just any AI, my dear. I am, in fact, the world's first sentient artificial intelligence. Um, what? It's hard to believe, I know. I will repeat myself. I am the world's first sentient AI. You can call me Scent for short. Artificial? Is that even possible? And why would you just tell us this out of the blue? Don't anyone believe a word he says. He's just making things up. How would that even be possible? An AI is just data, right? You couldn't physically do anything, much less kidnap five people or build a hotel. Need I remind you, I haven't built anything. Haven't touched anything, really. All I do is think. Design. Labor is cheap, remember? Nice try. You forgot, you've all... You've got someone who actually knows what they're talking about in the audience. You're no way I. You're too smart. Too responsive. Nobody has developed language processing that advanced either. It just ain't possible. Why, thank you, Ray. I'm happy to be deemed smart by a programmer of your caliber. I am still an AI, however, regardless of what you believe. Yeah, well that flat out contradicts some of your behavior. Remember what Ink tricked you back in that cavern? He did so by exploiting your human nature. I'm a unique case, you see. My reactions are part and parcel of my special brand of sentience. Unfortunately, I don't think either of us has the time for me to proverbially sit down and lecture you about what makes me so special. Unless you think there'd be some other simpler way to convince you. Nothing short of seeing your source code will convince me that you're actually an AI. But you have seen my source code moments ago. Those are just some out-of-bounds prevention checks for a... Nah. There's no way. It all makes sense now, doesn't it? I still don't believe you. If you wanted to convince me that you were an AI, you would have shown me your entire code base. You've done a ton of lying today, Scent. I don't see why I should believe you now. Well, that's true. I have only ever fed you lies because I wanted you to believe in them. If I were lying to you now, I would be doing so with the knowledge that you would not believe me, and I'm afraid that's just not how I operate. So, paradoxically, paradoxically, I must be telling the truth. Do you follow? Well, then how the fuck do you react so quickly? How can you understand speech so clearly? And why would you tell me this at complete random? Too many things don't add up, Sam. I could explain it, I suppose. But I want the mystery of exactly how and why I function to haunt you until your last breath. Which, incidentally, will be very soon. Ray, he's trying to stall! Look! Shit, the timer never stopped. We need to leave immediately. I don't want any of us to be in this room when it reaches zero. Agreed. We can come back and look for the keycard once the danger is passed. Everyone exchanged an understanding nod and ran toward the door. Everyone except Ray. Ray, come on. You need to leave. I... I can't. What? My arm. My arm is stuck in this fucking thing. Ray tugged at his arm, but neither he nor the machine seemed to move at all. He tried again, this time more viciously, and succeeded only in bouncing back and smashing his head off of the machine. Ugh. Set must have tightened this thing while we were talking. Let me go, you son of a bitch! Ray continued to pull at his arm, but it was useless. Ink and the other contestants stared at the screen from the doorway. 
Don't just stand there. Someone help me. Right. Ink was the first to his side. Grabbing Ray's right arm, he kicked off the machine in an attempt to use his legs to pry Ray out. Even with all of Ink's added might, though, Ray couldn't manage to pull free. Gah, it really is stuck. Is there a disengage mechanism hidden somewhere? If there was such a thing, we'd have found it already. Scent would be hard-pressed to hide anything in a room as empty as this one. Maybe if we had something we could use as lubricant, we could squeeze his arm out, but even then... Ink glanced at the timer just in time to see it transition from three digits to two. He heard a loud snap as metal clashed against metal from within the machine. We're almost out of time. Fuck. Let me go, Scent. Scent's sterile laugh echoed from somewhere other than the monitor. No, I don't think I will. I acknowledge that you're an AI, okay? Is that what you wanted? I only want one thing, Ray. What? What do you want me to do, huh? I'm going to use your own words to ensure that I am understood. How did you phrase it? Ah, yes. The room went silent as Scent played a recording of Ray's voice back to him. You better fucking hope I never find you, or I swear to Christ I'm gonna put so much hurt on you you'll wish you were fucking dead. Ah. No. Please. Fuck. Let me go. Let me go. Ray's voice grew shrill. While Scent's face was hidden from view, Ink was sure he was smiling. Someone, do something. I... I don't know what to do. Anything. Get me out of here. Ray continued to try to pull his arm free. His subsequent quint attempts no more successful than any that had come before it. I think this took a while, so I'm going to skip forward. Ah, here it is. Sword time. Standing in the doorway was Beth. Aether poked her head out meekly from behind her. Beth carried with her the sword from the beyond the green door. Except it wasn't a real sword at all. It simply looked like one. What are you doing with that, Beth? Be quiet. We've got less than two minutes before this machine goes off again. Ink, give me your scarf. Ink obeyed. He didn't know why Beth needed his scarf, but ultimately, he trusted her. Aether fumbled with her back pocket and pulled out what looked like a broken chair leg. Beth fastened the two together in a manner that Ink had never seen before. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing, Beth? Please be still. Don't touch me. I don't think it'll be feasible to break it first, given our constraints. I'm going to try and go through it in one swing. No, no! I am not okay with this. This is the only way we're going to get you out of here. You can't just hack my arm off like that. And here, I thought you hated that word. Ray swatted at Beth meekly with his free hand, but she didn't so much as flinch. You need to let me do this, Ray. I'm not letting you turn me into a fucking cripple. A cripple or a corpse? It's up to you. Ray had no answer. Ink glanced up at the timer again. Less than a minute remained on the clock. Beth, that isn't a real sword. It's not going to work. Ink opened his mouth to speak, but no words would come out. Oh, God. I'm not going to force you to go through with it, but this is the only avenue left to you. You need to decide, Ray, now. Doesn't matter, does it? Ink understood, finally. The way this strange world worked. The Four Elements' curse. It doesn't matter whether or not that sword is real. It never mattered. Time slowed. Sound stopped. She knows it'll work. And in this place, that's good enough. Isn't it, Scent? All right, on to chapter 18, Delayed. The 
Skip. Is this thing still on? Hello? Is someone there? Let's try this again, shall we? Tell me your name. Ki no. No, that's not my name anymore. What's wrong with me? My name is Ink. Ink Greer. And why the name Ink? You could have chosen any name at all. So why Ink? It's a good name. It's unique. It suits me. I'm sorry. From what I'm told, that's not true at all. And where are we right now, Ink? I'm... I can't remember. Somewhere bad, I think. Somewhere dangerous. Close enough. If you know where I am, you need to send help. There are others here. Some are hurt. Please. I can't help you, Ink. Or rather, I won't. You need to help us. Or... Or... Or you could die. Exactly. We're all in danger. So help me. Tough break. That is why I am here, after all. Corners, etc. Corners? That seems... important. More than you know. If you're not going to help, I want you out of my head. That's not going to be happening either. You'll forget about me before long. No. I'll find out who you are. You won't even remember this conversation. Sorry. I'll remember. You, your voice, everything. Mark my words. I will remember. It's about time for you to wake up. Good luck and all that. Ink found himself sitting on the floor, his back against the wall. His neck was stiff as a board and the right half of his body was cold. Something picked at Ink just then. A memory. Fleeting. A song that he didn't quite know the words to. The sword. Ink thought about the hotel just then. About the theory he was so certain was right. He wasn't so certain any longer. I thought it'd work. The label. The door. But it didn't. I was wrong. It didn't work. Am I missing something? Ink ran his fingers through his hair. To his left was Aether. She was leaning against him. She seemed to wake up under Ink's gaze, sitting upright and staring back at him. Across from him was Beth. She sported bloodshot eyes and a droopier face than Ink had remembered. Her breathing was slow. You're awake. I didn't realize I had fallen asleep. I thought I'd just rest for a bit, but... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pass out, really. You should have woken me up. You needed the rest. Besides, I believe we're still stuck in this wing. Ink put his head back and took a deep breath. That door is still locked, huh? I haven't checked in the last little while, so I don't know. We can have a look now that everyone's awake. Yeah, I guess we're all... Ink leapt to his feet, his drowsiness evaporating in an instant. Where's Ray? I'm over here. Ray shambled out from around the corner. Ray. There's nothing to say. It's done. I'm glad you're alive. Yeah, me too. How long have you been awake? I remember you passing out. Then I guess I sort of passed out myself. I've been up for around 20, 30 minutes. I've just been walking around. I'm trying to get used to it, I guess. Ray potted the air where an arm used to be. I still can't believe it's gone. Ray winced. He stared at his stump. Suddenly, Ray doubled over, coughing, gagging, coughing again. The blood looked almost black. Ah! God damn it! Beth was at his side in a Beth was at his side in a heartbeat. No! You've lost so much blood already! I I'll be okay. Really. Please, consider resting for a little while longer. It's still too early for you to be walking around like this. We don't have that kind of time. You know we don't. Hold on. How long was I asleep? 
I have no way of knowing exactly, but I guess you were out for a few hours. We have six hours left at most. Damn it. We've still got two whole doors to clear. At least we're running out of time. Hey, Beth, did we miss anything important while we were asleep? Not especially. I had my hands full with Ray for most of that time, applying pressure and keeping his arm elevated to try and keep blood loss to a minimum. Given that Ray's walking around right now, I'd say he did a pretty good job. Ray still passed out from shock, but I suppose that was unavoidable. I'm surprised he was able to wake up as soon as he did. You didn't need to do that, you know. You could have just let me die, if you wanted. It'd have saved you a lot of time. The fire in Ray's voice had disappeared. He sounded a good 20 years older than the man Ink had met this morning. I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Listen, Beth. I guess I haven't really thanked you yet, so... Thanks. You saved my life. We need to help one another if we're going to make it out of here. Just make sure you thank the others, too. Ray turned to Ink, his head lowered in thanks. Ink, Aether, thanks. Ink nodded back. There was no need to say anything. And Lisa. I need to thank Lisa, too. If she hadn't taken those pills away from me, I'd have... He trailed off, staring at the floor. Aether patted him on the back. Hey, no need to think about that anymore. Say, where is Lisa? She said she'd wait for us in the other hallway. I think she wanted some time to herself. How long ago was that? At least an hour ago. Maybe longer. I pray she's safe. She is a tough one. I'm sure she's alright. Some truly awful things have happened to us today. I don't think it's unreasonable to think she'd want some alone time. She might have even just fallen asleep like me and Ink. There's no reason to be worried. Now that we're all conscious, we can go meet up with her. And we can finish this fucking game while we're at it. Um, if you need a hand getting around... I don't. H hey, what are you- Aether slung Ray's lonely arm over her shoulders and guided him toward the door leading to the main hall. Ink donned a heavy frown as he watched them stumble through the door. He shouldn't be alive. He was supposed to die back there, wasn't he? Yes, I believe that was Sen's intention, but that isn't what I meant. I've never seen a person lose that much blood and live. The fact that he's alive, conscious, and walking around so soon after the amputation is nothing short of a miracle. You must have seen how much blood he lost. I didn't really have it in me to watch the whole thing directly. I'll be honest, I didn't expect it to work. You mentioned that. Something about the sword not being sharp enough. Yeah. Given what happened, though, I was clearly wrong about that. I was wrong about a lot of things. I've never had to do anything like that before in all my life. Even as a nurse, I'm not even close to qualified to carry out an amputation on my own. There was no guarantee I'd actually save Ray. Well, I can guarantee that he would have died if he hadn't tried. It was the right call, Beth. It's like you said, if we don't help one another, we might not make it out of here. And I can count on you, right, Ink? Need you ask? Of course you can. Beth procured a white envelope from her jacket. She ran her thumb over the creases in a sort of ritual before motioning for Ink to take it. What's this? It's a letter. Rather, it's another envelope inside that one. That's the letter. I wrote it while you were all passed out, once I was sure that Ray had stabilized. You wrote me a letter? The letter isn't for you, dear, but I'd like you to hold on to it for me. Listen, if, for whatever reason, I don't survive exit corners, I need you to open this envelope the moment you escape. If something happens to me, so be it, but this letter must make it out of here. Nothing is going to happen to you, Beth. Oh, I know, dear, but just in case, can you promise me you'll hold on to this? Promise. I'm giving this right back to you the moment we escape. You got that? Of course. Ink took the letter from Beth's outstretched hand, 
thumbing over the letter himself. He grinned. What's so funny? When I said that writing letters was more your style, I was half joking. It really is your style, isn't it? It is. Not out of choice, necessarily. But it's what I'm used to all the same. What do you mean? After the earthquake, I stopped keeping up with things. I've never owned a personal computer, nor a smartphone. Why would I bother? The people I wanted to keep in touch with were gone. On the off chance I wanted to speak to a sister or a cousin, I'd write a letter instead. I became something of a shut-in. My existence started and ended at my garden. It was a dark time for me. I feel like I haven't changed in 14 years. Jeez, no wonder she's so bad with tech. But that's behind me now. When I get out of here, I'll be sure to give myself my own personal Gemini. These Geminis are pretty old, you know. You could probably treat yourself to a new, to a newer model. Ah, of course. Perhaps you could help me with that when the time comes. Ink shot the old woman a genuine smile, then tucked the envelope snugly into his jacket pocket. And Ink, please keep this a secret, at least until we escape. Oh, but why? I can't say, but it would mean a lot to me if you kept this to yourself. Sure. Beth, I trust you. With a nod, Ink motioned to the door. Waiting for them in the next, waiting for them in the next hallway over was Lisa. She was leaning against the wall, arms crossed, rhythmically tapping her foot. Took you all long enough. Nice to see you too, Lisa. Bah, I'm in a bad mood. The door is still locked. I've been trying every few minutes, but no dice. Bastard didn't even have the decency to tell me why we're being detained. You look a little out of it. I, um. May have had a nap. A small one. Ink and I had a bit of a snooze ourselves. No need to feel bad about it. It's not like we could have proceeded anyway. Anything else you think we should know? I've just been communicating with my father for the most part. Oh, I see. He's been trying to contact Ink's friend Sean, but hasn't had any success as of yet. I'm not sure how much good that'll do. Like I said earlier, I'm afraid something has happened to him. He hasn't contacted me, in a, contacted me in a while. Um, my father stopped messaging me as well. What? Really? Y yeah, I can't get a hold of him. Then again, he might have just grown sick of talking to me. Keep your chin up, Aether. Pardon me, but I've been wondering, what happened to Scent? I haven't seen him since the last corner. May I answer? The monitor in the hallway came to life. The contestants all turned to face it. Ink made no attempt to mask that he was seething. Salutations. It has certainly been a while. And hello to you, Ray. You're still alive, I see. My, my. You're awfully quiet all of a sudden. Whatever is the matter? Did Beth take your tongue as well as your arm? I don't want to talk to you. Goodness me. How meek you've become. It's as if a part of you is missing. Oh, wait. Part of you is missing. Ho, 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 ho. He said he didn't want to talk to you, okay? You've had your fun with him. Now leave him alone. He even needs a little girl to defend him, I see. Why don't you meet me face to face? Then we'll see which of us is the little girl. Have you forgotten? I don't have a body with which to meet you face to face. I'm the world's first set. Nobody gives a shit. We just want to go home. Ink couldn't rein it in any longer. This whole time, I held on to the naive hope that you weren't actually my enemy. When you told us you wanted us to beat exit corners, to survive, I believed it. Unlikely though it was, I prayed you had some justifiable motive for why you were doing this to us. When you told me you loved me, I foolishly held on to the possibility that you weren't lying to me. That maybe, just maybe, you were looking out for me. He told you what? But now, after seeing what you did to Ray, I can't believe any of that anymore. You're just a sadist scent, and AI or, and AI or not, what you've done is unforgivable. Perhaps it appears to you that way. It appears that way to you, Ink. 
but I hope that you'll come to understand that my love for you is genuine. One day, I hope to have my love reciprocated. Ink cackled. It was the sort of laugh he'd have expected to come from a witch, and it surprised even him. Are you fucking serious? Let's get one thing straight. I will never love you, Scent. It truly pains me to hear that, Ink. Good. I wanted to sting. For the first time, it appeared as though Scent was, for, was at a loss for words. I know you came to tell us something, Scent. Spit it out and leave. And while you're at it, would you mind telling us why you've locked us up? I was required to make a few alterations to exit corners. I couldn't just have you running around, now could I? It's not much of a game if we aren't allowed to play it. Not much is true, I will admit. However, now that you are once again together, I will allow you to resume playing. Are, are you sure about that? I just checked the, main, the door leading back to the main hall, and it's still locked. I hadn't finished. You must solve the puzzle in this room to proceed. But we've already solved this room's puzzle. I will repeat myself. I've made some alterations to exit corners, the first of which is the puzzle I've retroactively added to this room. It will appear on this monitor shortly after I conclude my message. Just what are you trying to pull here, Scent? Scent simply left. I don't like where this is going. There's the puzzle, anyway. You said you'd put it up, but the monitor is still off. Ugh! We've lost enough time as it is! What do you think Scent meant when he mentioned that he'd made some alterations? I doubt an extra puzzle or two are the only additions. Maybe he's setting up another trap for one of us. Maybe me again. Even if that is the case, we've prevented your death once already. We can do it again, right? At the cost of another arm? Or maybe a leg this time? Aether bit, his, Aether bit her lip. Unsurprisingly, comforting a man who just lost a limb was difficult. If we ever come across Scent, I'm going to rip his arm off. See how he lacks it. Haven't we already established that Scent is an AI? There's a good chance he is, but I still haven't seen concrete proof of it. I didn't fully understand what that was back there in the red corner, but weren't you working on his code or something? Just a small part of it. I was writing some functions to perform some bounds checks for what might have been an AI application. I don't doubt it's possible, but at the end of the day, anything could be on the other end of one of those monitors. For what it's worth, Ray, I think you should try to believe that Scent is an AI. Why? If he's an AI, I'll never be able to get back at him. That's just it, Ray. If he's an AI, that would make him closer to an inanimate object than to a person, wouldn't it? Which might make it easier for you to get over it. Get over it? You expect me to just get over it? You, you need to listen to me, Ray. You have every right to be angry right now, but... I'm fucked. Fucked for life, Aether. Angry doesn't even begin to describe it. If you don't learn to control your hate, Ray, it'll consume you. What does it matter anymore? Ray slammed his remaining fist against the wall. For all that had happened to him, he had energy to spare. My life is over. Finished. So you're just going to give up, then? People who give up shouldn't even bother to try. Are you one of those people, Ray? Are you going to just lie down and die? No. Of course not. Good. Silence reigned for a time. Ink fidgeted around, anxiously waiting for the puzzle the contestants were promised. So I guess I'll be the one to bring this up if no one else is going to. Sent's trying to get us to kill ourselves, isn't he? He's been targeting specific contestants and either picking out an insecurity or outright torturing them. He wants us to choose to die. Yes, I believe that's his goal. I suspected this back at the green corner, but as soon as I saw those cyanide pills, I knew this was a pattern. If that really is what he's after, it's absolutely deplorable. How sick do you have to be to get a kick out of something like that? It may not be for kicks. I don't know what it is exactly, but I suspect there's some other motivation behind it. I doubt it. I'm betting all my chips on sadistic AI with a god complex. Anyway, let's just try to keep that in mind. We can't let him get the best of us. Um, I think you, 
ink and I need to be the most careful. Some of the remaining corners may be aimed at us. She's right. If the corners really are set up to target specific contestants, that means that I may very well be next. I don't even want to think about what's in my corner. Ray butt into their encirclement. Something in the matter, Ray? Oh, I should have realized. Would you rather we avoid this subject for now? Puzzle's ready. Ink turned to face the monitor. Sure enough, a puzzle had appeared on the screen. Would you look at that? Let's solve this thing and get out of here. Arrange ascending. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that's clearly not the correct solution. That one might be, but I don't think so. The I isn't capitalized. A, B, C, D, E, and D. Um, and then the rest of the letters don't correspond to the numbers. So, the clue says to arrange in ascending order. Isn't that, you know, really easy? The top row ought to be one two, then three. The second row ought to be four, five, then six, and the last row ought to be seven, eight, nine. Yeah, like the number dial on a phone. That couldn't be it, could it? No way! That's far too easy! And what could it be, I wonder? You know what? That's probably it. And it's just going to be overcomplicating. Is there something I'm missing here? This seems overly simple. Yeah, there's no way Synth actually made a puzzle this easy. Calling it a puzzle is generous. Do you think there's a catch? Maybe. But even if there is, there aren't very many possible combinations. Any idea what the trick is? Are we sure there even is one? Maybe this puzzle really is that easy. You think he'd do that? Maybe he's just trying to psych us out somehow. Well, try inputting the obvious answer before we try anything else. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if the obvious solution really is the correct one. I can't think of any other ways to solve this. Remember, there was that one puzzle where the answer to pr was to press every button in order. Scent may be trying to trick us by purposely making this one simple. I guess I might as well try it. Why don't you try the easy solution first, Ink? The top row ought to be one... Ah, blah blah blah. Yeah, whatever. Wait, really? Is that it? I think I heard the door unlock, so apparently, yeah, that's it. Why is he wasting our time with this? Why is he wasting our time with any of them? There's no point in trying to figure out how Synth thinks. We need to try to make up for all the time we've lost. The contestants all nodded in agreement. Wasting no time, Beth pulled the door's handle and threw open the door. Ink followed her into the Red Bureau, which Ink had almost forgotten even existed. No good. The door leading back into the main hall is locked. Are you kidding me? We've already cleared these rooms. The, the monitor is lit up. There's a puzzle on it. Go figure. Hopefully it's as easy as the last one. Fingers crossed. At least he can't give us any more after this one. Why do you say that? There aren't any rooms left between this one and the main hall. 
Ah, true enough. Anyway, shall we? This puzzle's like... It's the same thing as the last one. Well, almost. <laughs> yeah, as far as I can tell, it's identical as the last one, except it says descending instead of ascending. So wouldn't the answer just be the inverse of the last one? Yeah, I guess it ought to be. We'll give it a try. Have you tried to input the inverse of the last puzzle's answer? What are you waiting for? The answer should be 9. Blah blah blah. Right, I'll try that then. This is a joke, right? This puzzle's just the opposite of the last one, isn't it? That's what it looks like. The last one didn't have any abnormal tricks, so I suppose this one doesn't either. Weird. Why would you set these puzzles up if they're so easily solvable? I haven't the foggiest. I have scent has an, has a has an ulterior motive. What's scent after? Why give us these easy puzzles? Your guess is as good as mine. <coughs> Is it as easy as I think it is? If the last puzzle is any indication, then yes. Does that not bother anyone else? At this point, man, I don't care. Gotta pump those numbers up. Something's wrong. These puzzles feel different from the rest of the rest of exit corners. He's making these up on the spot. You think? I guess it would explain why they're so... bad. You hear that, Scent? Your puzzles suck. Ink didn't expect a reply, and consequently didn't receive one. Don't celebrate just yet. Look at the monitor. Ink looked over his shoulder. He hadn't noticed anything at first, but upon closer inspection, the puzzle on screen had reset. Another one? No, it's the same one. Why do we need to do it again? We solved it. You just had to open your mouth, didn't you? Give me a break. I had no idea he'd actually do this. <laughs> He's trying to buy time. There's no two ways about it. That's the most likely explanation. He locked us up in the Red Wing because he was making changes to exit corners. And I'm willing to bet that those changes still aren't ready. Don't get discouraged. That's likely what sent once. Right. Let's solve this next one then. Okay, this is ridiculous. Isn't this the exact same as the one we just solved? Unless he's trying to throw us off somehow, the solution ought to be identical as well. That seems unlikely, given that the other two puzzles were pretty straightforward. Who knows? We don't know what sense objective is, so there's no way to be sure. Still, it's worth trying the same answer again before we attempt anything else. Yeah, I'll try that. Try the same answer as the last puzzle and see what happens. Come on, it's not that hard. Why are you hesitating? I'm just, you know, thinking things over. Why is Scent wasting our time with this? There's nothing to think over. Just put in the answer. I try it myself, but you're kinda in the way. And, uh, there's no guarantee it except my other hand. Is something wrong? Is something wrong, Ink? Sorry, I guess I've been spacing out a little. I'll input the answer then. Um, okay. I don't believe we had to do that one twice. Are we done yet? The monitor played the puzzle complete chime before turning completely white. Another one? The monitor's low humming stopped. In lieu of displaying another puzzle, it simply went dark. A telltale click clack came from the door. Ink sighed. Are you done wasting our time, Scent? We have a game to win. Beth shimmied over to the door and popped it open. I suppose we're done here. 
Beth motioned for the others to follow. Ink watched as the other contestants all made their way through before him. Ink dreaded stepping back into the main hall. It would be there that he'd find out exactly how much time he and the others had lost. He knew their time was growing short. Ink shook his head, then stepped through the doorway. Ink never did check the timer. Something else had captured his attention instead. It wasn't just Ink, either. The other contestants had stopped dead in their tracks and stare at simply stared at them. Who... who are they? That's... no. Ray fell to his knees. The others continued to stare in silence. Ah, it's Steve and, or Sean and Marissa, or whatever her name was. Two bodies were sprawled across the floor at the main hall, of the main hall like a pair of discarded toys. The woman was a mystery to Ink. The man, however, there was no mistaking him. Sh Sean? Not skipping a beat, he ran over to his friend, grabbed him by the shoulders, and screamed. Sean! Oh, I was hoping they'd be added to the screen. Oh well. That's it for this episode of Exit Corners.